Hi, my name is Pat Phillips. I'm with the uh, Catalina aircraft that's parked behind me here. We've just arrived here at Payne Field in beautiful downtown Everett for the Vintage Aircraft Weekend. Uh, just want to meet the pilots that flew in here today. This is Grant Hopkins. Hey, he's uh, one of our pilots. It's a two-pilot machine, and this is our captain today. This is uh, Oliver Hello. Evans. Nice to meet you. Lovely yeah. flight down, and uh, I'm working in the back doing all the other stuff. Uh, a little bit of history on the aircraft. The aircraft was built in 1943 by Vickers of Canada under, under license to Consolidated Aircraft in San Diego. The reason being the Canadians built them because they couldn't build them fast enough in the States during the war. So uh, Boeing actually had a plant in Vancouver that uh, built 325 and I think Vickers about the same number. The aircraft was delivered to Victoria just up the road from you here in 1943 and flew in operations until 45. In 1948 it was converted to a search and rescue aircraft and Canada flew it uh, for probably 20 years until 1961 as a search and rescue aircraft. And then it was sold off into private hands and uh, converted into a water bomber. Saskatchewan government operated for approximately 25 years. And then it was sold to Buffalo Airways uh, up in the uh, Northwest Territories. And if you watch Ice Pilots and looked at uh, episode three, uh, episode three, season three, there was an entire episode devoted to uh, our owner, Bob Dick, going up and purchasing the aircraft from Joe McBrien and subsequently flew it to Victoria in 2010. At that point, we formed the Catalina Preservation Society, of which I'm one of the board of directors, and we have been restoring the aircraft back to its former RCAF configuration. As you can see, uh, the markings are all original to the aircraft. That's what it was marked with in 43. We've just finished installing those beautiful blisters on the back, which were actually gun positions and observation positions when they were out spotting for enemy submarines, or in, in many cases, downed pilots, which they rescued literally hundreds of them during the Second World War. Specifically, the Catalinas were known for their uh, long range and for their patrol duties, but significantly this, uh, this particular aircraft, not this one, but the Catalinas itself was uh, significantly involved with uh, finding the Bismarck for the British, and subsequently the British sank the Bismarck because the, uh, the Catalina stayed with it for 14 hours until the fleet caught up with it. And if you've watched the movie Midway, you would have seen Strawberry 5, which was the designation of one of the Catalinas found the Japanese fleet well ahead of time giving them plenty of notice and uh, to that end it uh, it saved you know it, it was the battle of midway was a success we have one canadian pilot that flew in the uh, indian ocean and he was known as the savior of salon Par paul Burchell spotted the other japanese fleet virtually the same one that attacked pearl harbor and was able to get a message off before uh, the japanese zero shot him down and he managed to survive the war so the aircraft itself has a huge history it would take a couple of hours to tell you everything but we're really glad to be here today. Um, we've been trying to get here for three years, but we had a few glitches, as they always do in these older aircraft, but she's running like a top today, and uh, hope to see you here. Come and see us. Thank you. So, uh, anyways, this, um, it's, it's pretty old. Uh, of course, most of the airplanes today are got t uh, TV screens, which are liquid crystal display uh, screens. <coughs> and uh, anyhow, the uh, everything is, the slang term steam driven. Uh, it's not really driven, driven by steam, but it's it's all driven by pressures and temperatures, which drive analog instruments. And uh, and the uh, the radios have changed a little bit over the years. Uh, and this quadrant right here uh, used to be upstairs in the uh, in the tower. Oh, okay. uh, in the it's a parasol wing in this thing, and the and the tower that holds the wing on top of the fuselage. Mm -hmm. Contained the flight engineer. Oh, okay. And uh, he used to run most of the fuel control switches, and uh, and also engine starting switches, and uh, a bunch of other stuff that the pilots didn't do. But when they uh, when they converted them into water bombers after the war, uh, into civilian aircraft, they moved most of that stuff up here, and they put it up here, so you can see it. And uh, and anyhow, uh, it um, uh, it's. The control column is actually quite heavy, uh, especially with all this stuff on it. And uh, and these ailerons, you can turn it three turns from stop to stop, which is uh, which I've never flown any other airplane like that. But the ailerons are just huge on this thing, uh, about 100 square feet each. Wow. Uh, there's no flaps, 
and, uh, and anyhow, when you, if you turn it too sharp, it'll start to shudder like that because of the, uh, the you know, it's kind of stalling a little bit. And wow. uh, so you've got to hang on to it. Wow. Uh, especially in a steep turn. And if you're on the water, uh, when you first give her the power, you got to <laughs> hold this straight back, and it weighs a lot, actually. Uh, and then once you get some airflow over the back of it, it'll become lighter okay. uh, and easier to fly. That's where this wow. airplane really excels, is off the water. And if you look down there, there's a little window there. That's That you use to make sure that your landing gear is down, as well as to make sure the gear doors are open properly. And uh, also when you're landing on the water, you don't want to see any light through there, otherwise you'll know that there's a problem yeah. down there. And, uh, and also, it's useful when you're taxiing to make sure that you're on the center line. Nice! <laughs> and, and, uh, see it. It's a bit dark down there, but there's an anchor down there. Oh, okay. Uh, and there's also a hatch that you can use to, to throw the anchor out. Wow. And, uh, and it's all fairly conventional. The uh, Most aircraft, uh, the control quadrant, as they call it, is mm -hmm. uh, a bit lower. But because they didn't have any room down there, yeah. uh, they moved everything up here. These are the throttles and these are the propeller controls. These are, this is the uh, trim for oh, okay. uh, rudder and aileron. And uh, I should say the Elon trim is down here, rudder and elevator. Oh, okay. And this is the uh, mixtures uh, for the engines and uh, fuel tank selectors right there. There's two fuel tanks in this airplane and they're huge, about 1,490 uh, US gallons. Oh, wow. So it can fly for about 20, 22 hours. Wow, and, that's impressive. Uh, and uh, also these are the electrical switches right here. Okay. Uh, and uh, and also, what you, if you look down here, that is a uh, an emergency uh, pump for getting the landing gear down, just in case oh, it okay. doesn't come down when you put it down, which happens now and then. <laughs> and uh, it's kind of nice having these windows up here. You can open that up, which will it's kind of like a sunroof. Oh, okay. Pretty good. So when you're on the water, you can jump out the top of the airplane. Oh, nice. Uh, which makes life a lot easier. Yeah, I bet. Rather than going out the side door, especially coming in towards the dock a little bit too quickly. Oh, okay. Uh, and uh, then you got problems. So you got to get out of here quickly. And it's also especially nice on a warm day like today. Yeah, I bet so. And, uh, and other than that, it's pretty straightforward. It's all uh, cables. All the uh, cables here do something. And some people say that it could be called fly-by-wire, which is actually yeah. really kind of teasing because they don't do that uh, in the 1940s. Uh, and these are all stainless steel cables, very similar to piano cables. Uh, that go back uh, to the tail and to the ailerons and uh, to uh, everywhere else like fuel control and the engines and what have you. Yeah. So it's all very manual and, uh, and it likes to be used. If it, uh, if it sits around for too long then it kind of seizes up, yeah. kind of like uh, an old man. Yeah. You've you got to use it or lose it. Exactly. And, uh, and anyway, it's, it's, uh, it's been a really good airplane. This has been very reliable and I spend more time fixing it than flying it. And especially Grant, uh, our, our engineer pilot back there, mm -hmm. he can uh, he can work magic with this airplane. Wow. It's, you, it's essential to have somebody around who who knows as much as Grant when it comes to working on these airplanes. Oh yeah. And uh, because they tend to get a little bit fickle and uh, sometimes, and they uh, they kind of they, they get mad at you easily if you don't pay attention to them. Um, and uh, so it's a constant upkeep. Um, and, uh, and anyways, it's all worth it because once you get this airplane up in the air, there's nothing like it. Oh, I bet so. Yeah. It's oh, yeah. incredible. Yeah, it's quite a machine. And uh, there's nothing else that I can show you much up here. There's, uh, oh, it's got uh, manual air conditioning. You can see that thing oh, yes. right there. That's, that's just a, a little lever that uh, opens up and it catches the outside air. So you don't have uh, any air conditioning when you're stationary. And you got to <laughs> remember to close that thing when you land on the water. Otherwise, you'll get wet. Oh, okay. But, uh, that's okay if you're in a place like Africa. Cool yeah. off a little bit. Yeah. And uh, and also, what else can I show you? They got um, this is a circuit breaker box over there. Oh, okay. And uh, the local compartment for the maps right there. And if you come around there, and if you look down on that side right there, that's where the hydraulic uh, stuff is. Oh, like. I see. There's a lot of uh, accumulators down there. Yeah. Uh, and they uh, they're essential for keeping the hydraulic system pressurized. And, uh, and anyhow, it's, uh, yeah, it's a pretty good airplane. What a beauty. Sure. And uh, I, 
I can't really show you much else apart from the, the uh, fuel control. These are shutoff valves and also it's got a fire bottle. Okay. Uh, and uh, that's the fire extinguisher right here. And this is an electrical panel. Keep an eye on the generators. This airplane's actually got an auxiliary power unit oh, in okay. the back, which helps. Oh, nice. Let's get, get the engine started and what have you. Okay. And uh, yeah, that comes in handy, especially if you're up there in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, I bet so. Yeah. That's our, uh, that's our APU back there, auxiliary power unit. Oh, I see. And uh, that, uh, we start that first and then we'll get the uh, power going enough where we can start the, the right and left engines. Okay. And uh, this back here is where the, uh, the gunners used to be. Now we used to have, at, some, at one point we used to have three guys. One guy would be lying on his belly shooting out the, ta the tail there. Oh, okay. And another guy would be right here in kind of a swiveling contraption and this blister opens up like an eyelid wow uh, and there'll be another guy over here on this side so uh, uh, you'd be a pretty easy target to hit but the problem is is that once you became in sight of this airplane and somebody else saw you then uh, you'd probably be a sitting duck as well yeah but it's so slow it only goes about 110 knots oh okay pretty slow and, uh, and if you look up there at the wing you can see that there's no flap, of course, right? Yeah. And uh, and that wing is about 104 feet across with the wingtip floats uh, uh, retracted. Um, and uh, so it's one huge wing, great for low-altitude reconnaissance. And that's really what this airplane was built for. Awesome. Uh, looking for subs. Low altitude, could fly for a long time. Wow. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah, they don't build them like they used to. No, they don't, do they? 